Welcome to Jefferson, Louisiana. Home to the Swamplands, the coveted Gator Hunt, Cajun food, and many more bayou favorites. Though the bayou has many fascinating views and plenty to keep busy with. This particular set of thick brush and deep swamplands in Jefferson, Louisiana, has much more than just a few secrets to hide. Some of those secrets would remain buried in the marshlands for over 20 years. With miles of marshland butting up next to miles of deep swamp, it's the perfect place a serial killer might say, you could get lost forever. This case may be a bit different though as you are soon to find out. As this may not be a serial killer case at all. But instead, a very advanced cover-up. When we call 911 we expect to be greeted by a servant of the community. On the contrary, if you dial 911 in Jefferson, Louisiana, you might actually be greeted by the killer or killers themselves. Buckle up, this is the unsolved case of the Jefferson 8. Before diving into this further, you are tuning into Coffee with History. If solved, unsolved, heroic, or just plain mysterious is your thing, make sure to join us as we go back in time and discover the past. On this channel we will post about anything we find notable. We are always up for suggestions, just drop them in the comments. For a chance to be featured in future videos if we end up covering your subject. Without further ado this is today's harrowing tale. The Jefferson 8. It was in May of 2005 when the first of the so-called Jeff Davis 8 was found. The man who discovered the body was fishing at the time and at first thought it was a mannequin floating near the Grand Marais Canal Bridge where he'd cast his line. But, I saw flies, he said, and mannequins don't attract flies. Law enforcement used fingerprints to identify the woman as 28-year-old Loretta Lynn Chison Lewis, a local sex worker. Other victims were found as well Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson, 30, Kristen Gary Lopez, 21, Whitney Dubois, 26, Laconia Muggy Brown, 23, Crystal Shea Benoit Zeno, 24, and Brittany Gary, 17. The final body of Nicole Guillory, 26, was found off Interstate 10 in 2009. Most women were found to have been strangled, however this is only speculation due to the severity of decomposition of most of the bodies. Only two of the women had a definitive cause of death. Those two women were Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson, 30 at the time of death. The other women was Laconia Muggy Brown, only 23 at the time of her death. Both women had been determined to have had their throats slit. This very likely could have been the fate of the other women. Due to extreme decomposition though, this can only serve as theory. It wouldn't be until December 2008, after seven women had already been slain, that a task force composed of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies was brought together to finally catch the person responsible for the murders. Authorities told the public they were likely looking for a serial killer. That's when the media descended upon Jennings, a town of only 10,000 people. That's also when journalist Ethan Brown arrived in 2012. Beginning his own investigation, which culminated in a book deal, and a Showtime docuseries called Murder in the Bayou that aired in 2019. Brown's persistence could be credited with much of the continued interest in the case, though three years after his documentary, the killer still hasn't been found. Brown makes a compelling case against the idea that the killings are the work of a single serial killer. The more he dug into the case, the more misconduct and corruption he uncovered within local law enforcement, the same law enforcement participating on the task force supposedly assigned to catch the killer. It should have been obvious all along that these deaths were not the handiwork of a serial killer, Brown wrote in a 2014 Medium article. According to the FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit's own research, serial killings typically involve strangers with no visible relationship between the offender and the victim. The women themselves all knew one another intimately. Kristen Gary Lopez and Brittany Gary were cousins. Brittany Gary and Crystal Benoit had been roommates. They had all engaged in sex work at the same seedy motel in Jennings. All but one of them, Ernestine Patterson, 
had been involved with an infamous local pimp and strip club owner named Frankie Richard. At one point, Richard was actually charged in one of the killings. Frankie Richard, a local strip club owner, and suspected drug dealer, who has openly admitted to being a crack addict and to having sex with most of the victims. He was also among those last seen with one of the victims, Kristen G. Lopez. Police ultimately dropped the charges when witnesses' statements conflicted, and evidence was mishandled. Law enforcement's own witnesses have connected Richard to being good friends with members of the local sheriff's office. Two females when inmates of the Jefferson Davis Parish Correctional Institute stated the following, sheriff's officers disposed of evidence in the Lopez case, and that the evidence was discarded at the behest of Richard. This has never been confirmed by authorities, the women who offered these statements did not have anything to gain by offering up this information. Which is the reason most people believe the women to be creditable witnesses to police corruption. Two other men were charged with killing Ernestine Patterson, Byron Chad Jones, and Lawrence Nixon, who was the cousin of the fifth victim, Laconia Brown. Both men were briefly charged with second-degree murder in the Ernestine Patterson case. However, the sheriff's office did not test the alleged crime scene until 15 months after Patterson's murder and found it failed to demonstrate the presence of blood. What's most disturbing, though, is the frequency with which these women would offer up information to law enforcement about a prior murder and then wind up dead themselves. Brown's investigation revealed that every one of the eight victims were informants regarding the local drug trade. Nicole Guillory, the last victim, allegedly told her mother it was the police killing the girls. She celebrated her 27th birthday only reluctantly, reportedly telling her mother, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna be here. The strip club owner, Frankie Richard, told Brown, Nicole knew a whole lot about a whole lot. Reportedly this would not be the only one of the Jefferson 8 victims that would warn others of her death in advance. The fifth victim, Laconia Muggy Brown, apparently told one of the witnesses from the task force that three police officers were going to kill her. Each of the victims spent time in the local jail and reports note that jailers in Jefferson Davis Parish often trafficked female inmates for sex work, including some of the victims of the Jefferson 8. Kristen Lopez, another one of the victims, was present when police shot and killed a drug dealer named Leonard Crochet in 2005, along with several individuals connected to the Jeff Davis 8 case. Including Alvin Bootsy Lewis, who fathered a child with victim Whitney Dubois. Who is also the brother-in-law of the first victim, Loretta Chison Lewis. A grand jury investigated the shooting and determined there was no probable cause for a charge of negligent homicide against police. Even though a Louisiana state police investigation into the Crochet shooting concluded that Crochet was unarmed when he was shot to death by law enforcement. Witnesses of the shooting would tell investigators, they believed the police had killed many of the victims because of what they knew about the shooting of Leonard Crochet. It would become very apparent that corruption, missing evidence, along with a host of highly suspicious activity by the Jefferson Police Department, were nothing but common practice. In the 90s, multiple officers of the Jefferson Davis Parish Sheriff's Office were involved or charged in major drug trafficking deals, obstruction of justice, illegal traffic stops, and using public funds to make large purchases for themselves. Jefferson Davis Parish still has nearly 20 unsolved homicides, for a town of just 10,000, this is both an extremely large number of murders, and an appalling clearance rate of homicides. The misconduct would carry into the new millennium, with Officer Phil Karam deliberately opening firing on several fellow cops. Sexual violence and harassment lawsuits filed by eight female Jennings cops against their male colleagues, and a police chief accused of stealing drugs and money from the evidence room. Brown learned through his investigation that even Louisiana Congressman Charles Balstany had allegedly had sex with three of the victims at that motel where the girls were and that a field representative for Balstany actually owned the hotel. Louisiana Congressman Balstany tried to sue Brown for defamation, but dropped the suit after he lost the election. In 2020, a New Orleans nonprofit called the Promise of Justice Initiative 
called for a federal inquiry into Jefferson Davis Parish and surrounding communities law enforcement, saying the area is subject to a dangerous level of incompetence by law enforcement. The current Jeff Davis Parish Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Chris Ivey released a statement saying, this is something that happened 20 years ago and none of the people involved work for us, so I don't think we have anything to do with it. Leaving the Jeff Davis 8 murders unsolved to this day. The letter from the Promise of Justice Initiative to the Justice Department stated, the Jefferson Davis Parish Law Enforcement Agencies and leadership have a long tradition of misconduct and corruption that has gone unchecked. This behavior has encouraged criminal activity and violence, especially violence against women, to flourish in the region. Here's to hoping the person who killed these women will one day be brought to justice. If you made it this far hit that like and subscribe button for many more videos from Coffee with History. Now, check out one of our other unsolved murder cases. By hitting one of the links on the screen.